What's up, everybody? Good morning, and welcome. Welcome to Waken Base. I hope y'all are doing well out there. I know it's a little bit of a cold and rainy day outside for a couple of us out there. I know for myself it is cold. Very cold. And I'm not a, a super big fan of this new thing where it's 70 degrees for three days, then 30 degrees for a day, then 60, then 30. I've never seen that. Seems weird. But enough about that. Let's talk about what we're going to be doing today, which is doing a little bit of what we were doing last week, exploring some personal favorites. Last week was personal favorites of Parents 63501. A little Sly and the Family Stone and Friends there. Very, very cool. Mom also hit me up afterwards with some very good facts about Sly. And uh, it's good to hear that he's doing well because he's had some hardships in his life. And uh, apparently, I think he's living in L.A. now. Uh, yeah, doing real well. Saw some pictures of him. It was very nice to hear. Uh, but today, no sly. We're doing my favorites. At least my favorites in the city pop genre. So, I'm going to say good morning to everybody here, and then uh, we'll just get diving in. And uh, also, we're going to play a little bit of a game called Seven Degrees of Separation. Uh, I think the original one was from Kevin Bacon. I like Kevin Bacon. Great guy. Uh, but we're going to do that with Tatsuro, and I bet it'll take us about two. Two or three. <laughs> so, saying good morning to everybody here. Good morning, Han. Good to have you here. I know that you've been working a lot uh, these last several mornings on Thursdays. So, good to have you here. Bobby, as always, a pleasure. Gentlemen. Layla, good to see you as well. My lady. My lords. All you wonderful people. All right, let's jump in. Boop. Hey, hey, hey. not on that. There we go. So, what we're starting off first with is one of my all-time favorite city pop tracks that is not necessarily underrated. People appreciate it. But I think this should be like the poster child of just city pop vibes. It slaps so hard, even though it's slow. We're starting off with a little bit of My Yamane Tasagore. This is 1981? 1980. Right on the money. Debut album from her. Uh, we'll be reading a little bit of information about her and talking a little bit through the track, because as you know here, not quite a radio station, not quite a commentary review station. Just kind of random stream of thought. So, let's jump in. Starting off with those awesome wind sound effects. And uh, what is it? Oh, let's see what instrument it is. I bet it's a Roland. Let's see if they even say. Who's playing keys? Yeah. Oh, snap! What's up, Han? Thank you, baby! Too kind to me, sir. Too kind. Now I'm grooving extra hard. Good. Oh, you're hoping to get. I know that Texas weather, homie. Sometimes you want to do stuff, and it's just like no. It's just like no. Is this really the first song you ever played on bass? What a good choice. This is one of those pieces that's, it's not complicated with the notes, but to give it that soul, takes some time, but once you get it, it's so satisfying. Such good key sounds, man. So well balanced. Mm. Just a quiet recording. Opens up. Oh. Gotta give credit where credit's due. Pecker on percussion. <laughs> oh, man. 
Dude. <laughs> what? what a terrible name. And this turnaround right here. Ah, oh, yeah. So good, man. So, so good. So, this whole album was arranged by Nozomi Aoki. And I really don't know a ton about this guy, other than I remember looking at his picture last time we looked at this album. It was like, he looks a little, uh, I mean, he's happy in that picture, but a little distressed at the same time. Anyway, this is a wonderfully arranged, so well balanced. Geta Takashi, what does he do? Who's this bass player? All right, already starting our degrees of uh, connection to Tatsuro. Already right here, we've got Takanaka, which is going to be a pretty close tie. And then there's Tatsuro's wife, Maria Takeuchi, so we're getting pretty close, <laughs> even closer. Takanaka. That's where we've seen this guy before. And some Kingo Hamada. So good, man. Those drums? I wish it would tell us exactly where every musician played. It's just so random on Discogs. Yeah. <laughs> nice picture. You got all the rapping still on it. Super groovy outro solo. All right, we'll turn this down here a little bit because the last two minutes are just guitar wailing, which is amazing. Do not get me wrong. Oh, I guess there's a little bit more singing. Well, I guess I'm a liar. Welcome to Wake and Bass. <laughs> but yeah, this song, so well written, so well balanced, and I love Maya Yamane's voice. You know, I know that part of it is a bias towards uh, Cowboy Bebop. Because she is the vocalist for at least all the Amer most of the American or English version tracks, and I th also think she did most of the Japanese tracks as well. But that sound of her really smoky, deep, not gruff voice, but it has this—I guess smoky is what they use as the description, which is kind of weird. Like, what does that mean? But this is the sound, re like very emotional, very personal, but then she can go up here very beautiful. It, it's a really cool range. I love her voice. Um, so yes, Maya Mane, one of my favorites, really, really fantastic. And just reading a little bit about her here. So she got started uh, by winning a prize in the Yamaha Music Foundation's Cocky Pop Contest. And Paige does not exist, which is just a shame because I was very interested in this name. Anywho, reading through here, uh, her career was very front-loaded uh, in terms of her recording career. So she starts in 80 with Tasagore, this album, the song. Then her second album, Sorry, is in 1981, also an excellent album. The rest I'm not as familiar with. Once we get into like Will, The Day Before Yesterday, all that kind of stuff. I don't know her more recent things. And then on my radar, she drops off until we get to 97, Cowboy Bebop OST. Every one of these tracks right here, man. <laughs> Banger. They're all... Oop. <laughs> Japanese jazz fusion mix. Not yet. Uh, anyway, these are all amazing. Really, really good. I don't know Mirage of Blaze. I'm going to have to go check that out now. Or Macross Plus, any of that kind of good stuff. But uh, before we leave this Wikipedia page, because this is the English page, we have to do our due diligence and go over here and check out the Japanese version and see if there's anything notable that stands out. First thing I notice is that her uh, husband, who has passed since passed away in 2003, Takako Yamada, was Japan's leading meditation instructor. Interesting. People are very interesting. 
All right, let's check back in with chat. Again, thank you, Han, for the kind donation. My man, my man. Okay, got some from Bob, Bobby here. Let's see here. Uh, or Han, if I'm not mistaken, Tasogare means midnight, correct? I do believe that even means midnight or maybe we... No, it does mean midnight. Tasogare, Google Translate. I don't know why I thought that would work. Oh, it did work. Hey, Twilight. Not bad. Okay, so that's what that means. Always good to make sure we know what we're listening to. Uh, Bobby here says, yeah, fantastic tune. Love how everyone on this track uh, is staying in their lane, holding down the groove, and the guitar is just showing up. <laughs> Whenever you have everybody else just laying in the chillest of pockets, there is no better time to wail distortion guitar solo. Oh, or any solo. Get Jake Concepcion in there. Start, you know, saxing it up. Mm. That's what that's what a good pocket feels like to play in, though. It's a good, apt observation, Bobby. I love it. I love it. Oh yeah, if I had just kept reading in the chat, you guys already solved the problem. And figured it out with Twilight. <laughs> you know me. I'm slow. I'm always day late, dollar short. But I love you guys, and I'm trying. Uh so Hansel here is it. I would say my favorite female city pop singer is Meiko Nakahara. Uh, male is Toshiki Katamatsu. Toshiki Katamatsu's got a great voice. Uh, really, really good. Yeah, people don't give him enough props for his voice. People always talk about his guitar playing and arranging, which is also excellent. But he's got a really cool, really nice, pretty, pretty voice. He's got a pretty voice. Uh, and yes, Meiko Nakahara. She is one that I just haven't listened to a ton of her ballady stuff i know a lot of her you know more pop tune or upbeat faster stuff in my head but maybe we'll check some out later let me know uh han what your favorite mako nakahara song to check out to uh maybe get it on a little more of the lyrical side hit me up we'll listen to it okay so uh, now playing our little game of connection here looking at our musicians that we've got here we go we got a whole bunch that we could jump off and go explore, but I wanted to start with Makoto Matsushita, our guitarist, our whale boy who was just absolutely shredding there at the end. Actually, was that him? Let's look, because we did have a, a range by guitar. Where does Tasagare? Is that... Oh, I'll figure it out. Oh, I'll figure it out. I didn't figure it out. Is it this one? I bet it's number six. Anyway, did he play on all of them? Yeah. Yeah. He played on all of them. Sorry for that little sidetrack. I was like, I don't want to say the wrong thing. But that's who we're checking out next. And we're going to check out his album, First Light. And I'm thinking of doing... I kind of want to do First Light. But I don't know. It is my show. Can I do that? I think I can. I think I can. And I'm going to. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Yeah. Yasuo Tomikura on the bass here. Sounding super tasty. Hey! Sequential cir Circuit Prophet. Good to have you here. Welcome, welcome. Sayo Kawagushi. Doing it. Oh, damn. Oh, I didn't do it again. Okay, I, I'm sorry. I hate to be just such a little baby about this, but that was such a good fill, and he only gave it to us once. I gotta get it again. Triplet in there. Oh, it's so tasty. I love it. Taking the first light. A 
watching it fail. Ah, it's so tasty. Puzzle. All right. I've got my stuff now. What an interesting harmonic progression. It's very strange. Yeah. Such an interesting role. The major. The whole step up. Yeah, they just keep walking up somehow. Ah, who's playing trumpet? Or is that flugel? Oh, it's flugelhorn! Suzumu Kaz Kazuhara. Oh, that's... That, I love that reverb. Julian, how's it going, buddy? Good to have you. <laughs> dude, Tomikura is the beloved. He just slaps, dude. He's so good. Oh, awesome. That's good to hear, Han. Whenever you get lazy and that works out, you gotta share a video with us. Anytime I see somebody playing something, it's always a billion times easier to like reverse engineer than just listening. So I look forward to that. Interesting. So we got a sequential circuit talking about. Now I'm assuming you can compare him to Christopher Cross. I was gonna say, now who are you talking about? Are you talking about uh, Matsushita here? Because I, th that tracks pretty well. Nice little, funk, super funky bass outro. So what I'm babbling about here is talking about uh, Makotsu Matsushita. We've got an excellent uh, comment here by uh, Sequential Circuit Prophet 5 good of saying that this was not a super popular well-selling album in Japan something that got you know posthumously uh, more fam not famous but more popular more you know critically acclaimed that kind of thing but I like how uh, he compared him to Christopher Cross because <laughs> you know technically we are talking about the same things in terms of genre from an AOR point of view what is AOR for those of you who are new to the channel have not heard that term before? That means adult-oriented rock. It is like saying, hey, could you describe me? Yes, I am a human man. It's like, wow, you gave me about as little information as possible. <laughs> but what adult-oriented rock means is it's this kind of sound, this city pop-esque idea of being on a beach, or being on a boat, or just relaxing, and I'm talking about the American version of AOR, which is Christopher Cross, uh, things like Kenny Loggins, uh, I think it was John Messina, Messina I know is his last name, and then of course you start moving into people like Michael, Michael McDonough, and Doobie Brothers, all those kind of cats. And then once you get into the Doobie Brothers and stuff like that, it gets a little more rock and roll, and less... Christopher Cross. But this AOR style, uh, the analog, or the parallel, I guess, to that in Japan is city pop. And the things that city pop adds is, of course, the city life, nightlife, love, you know, connections or lack thereof, or what's called like troubadour love, which is this idea of, you know, falling in love with a print, you know, the old King Arthur's court. You know, a knight would fall in love with the 
prince or with the queen or whatever, but it was courtly love, not romantic love. So it's like, I'm dedicating my life to you and I'm not going to be with anybody else. And I'm just going to think about you all the time, but I know that you're with the king and that's totally cool. But I'm going to write poems about you and I'm going to go kill on the battlefield for you because I love you and I'm going to write poems. Is that... <laughs> Is that kind of overly emotional feel? Um, AOR. Term of the day. There you go. So, anyway. Killer of this track was Yasuo Tom Tomikura. Great bass player. Really, really wonderful fills. And he was the guy that I chose to make our next thread of connection over to Kingo Hamada. Doing some Midnight Cruising because he played on that album. But before we do that, we had some suggestions here from uh, chat. One from Han Solo. A specific request I had for uh, some Mako Nakahara that would show off some vocal vocal stylings for me. And he hit me up. And we got Puzzle by Mako Nakahara. So let's check that out. And see what we got going on here. Did you pick a song just for me? Mm. That was an awesome bass intro. and chill. Oh, here we go. Julian got us some more info. So he's saying Makoto, so our last artist here, said in an interview that younger people would keep the album singles out of stock at rental stores. Huh. That's pretty good. I like that. I want to Love how everything sounds on this album. Guitars, drums are crispy, and the bass tone. I'm not sure if he's playing a jazz bass or something. It's a good question. You know, when in doubt, go with jazz bass. But let's look at Tomikura. Let's see what he's got. He picked a good track on. I was being a jerk and talking over all of her singing earlier, so when she comes back into the second verse, I'm gonna shut up and listen. <laughs> Although, with these sweet keys. Ooh, looks like he plays an Ibanez. At least he does now. I just find. Is this exactly what I was going to do? What is this website? It's everything. It's everything. Dude, there's Jun Fukamachi. Dude, this was what I was gonna do, except so much better than I could ever do it. Wow. Very funny. <laughs> All right, again, distracted by other things, shiny objects, because that's how I am. Okay, Han, you got me. Beautiful voice. She has a wonderful voice here, and this really shows it off well, because normally you hear her with a lot of chorus in the background, and she's up higher in her register, and she's clearly a good singer, but it's so pop hook oriented that you don't get a lot of that soulful kind of sound to really tell the range of what you're working with. This was a great song to showcase that. So, thank you for sharing. 
And this is where in her album? This is 1987. Hey, you got those sweet slapping keys. Oh, yeah. Good stuff. Good stuff. So, Meiko Nakahara, looking at her releases of her major primary albums here, uh, the one I'm most familiar with is Friday Night Magic, or Friday Magic, not Friday Night, sorry. Friday Magic, Mint, I know that one. And it looks like this is her blah, blah, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eighth studio album in five years, uh, 1987, Puzzle. And that was the debut track right there. Very, very cool. So going back a tick here uh, to talk about um, our bass player, Yasuo Tomikura, I have stumbled upon the thing that I wanted to do today, which is the seven degrees of separation from Kevin Bacon or Tatsuro. And so let's see how far our homeboy is from Tatsuro, because I'm going to guess he is pretty dang close. Now, can I do a control find on this? Absolutely, I can. Is that Tatsuro? Uh-huh. Where's the other one? Oh no, I guess there's no direct connection here. I find that extremely hard to believe. Isn't Jake Conception on right there? What what what's happening? Ooh. <laughs> what is this take? I'm so confused. I could just j <laughs> What is? Why can I do this? What is this website, guys? I'm like losing my mind. Main art. Okay. So key. Okay, I'm losing my mind. <laughs> This is what you call the worst kind of dead air, because I'm just sitting here like an idiot swinging around a pl plot point map uh, instead of talking to y'all and hanging out. I'm going to have to figure what this is out later, because this is cool. Man, circus. I haven't heard about them in a long time. I've thought about them in a long time. Enough of that. Let's go on to some Kingo Hamada. So this is uh, another connection here with our bass player, moving on, trying to get our way to Tatsuro. And I figured we'd listen to Midnight Cruising because I love that song. As I am slowly typing in Kingo Hamada, though, if somebody else has a really good Hamada song that they want to listen to, I'm typing so slow and trying to read the chat at the same time. That's why Tatsuro drags the whole day. <laughs> That's what I'm saying, man. Dude, that thing look that thing was crazy. All those different connections. I'm gonna have to type in Tatsuro now and just see what what happens here. <laughs> Alright. Before we jump in here, I'm just gonna catch up with our with our comments here. This is what I imagine the Library of Alexandria was like. Dude, I bet that thing was dope. I can't believe it. Why'd they burn it down? No fire extinguishers back in 500 BC or whatever that was. <laughs> yeah, Fantasy. Uh, it's a, the best seven inch. Yeah, Fantasy is amazing, man. Fantasy is so good. It's. I was not trying to knock at all earlier saying that Mako Nakahara didn't have a good voice. It's just you know different styles. And thinking of Maya Mane, who's so much more on the ballad side, she showcases it all the time. So Puzzle was again a great example. But yeah. I do like me some fantasy. It's a good song. Uh, ooh. Photons when no one's looking at them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is a smart this is a smart crowd of people, man. Y'all y'all the best fan base ever. I love you guys. Uh, let's see. If we, if we get to Na Naoki Watanabe, do you listen to the ABs? Uh, closer Do You Remember Me? It's peak. I man, it's been a while since we I listened to the ABs. I forgot that cuz that's like a super group kind of, right? Um We'll have to look that up here in a second here. Uh, someone asking, hey, do you read your comments? I do. I mean, I'm reading these right now. I also do read my comments on my videos. Uh, it's just really slow because I have to go, as I go through them, when people give suggestions or when people, uh, like, to improve the channel or to request a song, I have to put them in lists and get priority and do all that kind of stuff. And I'm so far behind in tabs. I'm going to be doing some tabs today. Check that out later. Okay, uh, 
I think when we pull on the bubble, those most associated with the bubble also follow. Yeah, it, I'm just like a toddler. It just visually amused me, and that's why I was dragging it around, just giggling. <laughs> yeah, let's see here. Dolphin. Okay, there we go. Somebody was fast enough. Dolphin. Oh, yeah, I forgot about this song. This is a dope song. Dolphin in town. Gatsby Woman. Ooh, all right. Looks like we're going to have to do two because I don't know Gatsby Woman. Eat your heart out, Mario Kart. They wish they had hooks as tasty as that. They're pretty tasty. Don't get me wrong. Let's see what happens here with if we do Kingo Hamada. What is this crap? This is all you got? I don't believe it. I broke it. Random Wikipedia jump. Yeah, dude, I love it. This is a dope, dope song. So you got a lot of really cool things going on. Uh, hey, see, why is this like this? That makes no sense. What about this? Tatsuro. Members. Gene Orloff. What's happening? Are these band memberships, or is this connections of music? Dude, this website's nuts. Let's put this what? Okay. I'm very confused how this works. Filter by musical instruments, genre, and country. It's a good hook. <laughs> and then the best part. You gotta wait a couple minutes to get to the good stuff. Okay, so I kind of understand how this works here, but not really. So I'm going to save us all the experience of my personal insanity by moving past that one. But, it looks pretty cool. Alright, so, Dolphin in Town. Little uh, Kingo Hamada here from Midnight Cruising, which I do believe was his first album? Totally wrong, fourth album. Manhattan in the Rain, that's, okay. Duh. But he's another cat that got uh, four albums in two years. So, looks like he doubled up in 1981. Good for him. Okay, very cool. Very, very cool. So we have one more uh, request here for a Kingo Hamada song. And while we're here, might as well keep rolling with it. Let's uh, see if I can copy and paste this from our homie Prank. Good to see you, bud. Long time contributor, member of our community here. Ooh, is this is this called Heart Cocktail? Oh, not a good name. I'm sorry. No hate. Just ill-advised. Have a 
having said that, this is a bopper so far. I wonder if uh, Tommy Kura was his lifelong uh, bass player. Let's look. Looks like no. At least not the first album. Okay, so he picked him up on the second album. Man, he is hitting it, dude. Alright. Looks like after that, they were inseparable. Maybe not. Too good. That's a little Michael Jackson right there. I heard that bass lick. It's like people are in a basement yelling. Ah. Ooh, a little bit of a request from Pi for Piper here. All right, let's see if we can find our way to Piper. I respect it, Circuit. There's a lot of stuff we listen to on here that has a lot of really good qualities that just objectively nicely done, but not for me. I feel you on that. I do like me some Kingo Hamada. His voice... I like his rock and roll stuff a little bit more for his vocal quality. Like, he's doing fine. Nothing wrong. But I'm more interested in the music. I like his arranging and his... The people that he pulls in, like Tommy Kura. Like, that's a great bass sound, man. I bet those profiles are all generated. Yeah. <laughs> so he's up to. That was a cool key change. There's a meme for this? What? Oh. Oh. Okay. <laughs> okay, I have heard that meme. That is uh Okay, so it's this this is that version of the song. A little future funk? Is that what we would call this? I mean, I call this awesome. Dude, that's that's how I got into city pop. For those of y'all who don't know, was all the future funk stuff, all like vaporwave that that hit, and especially with future funk, just taking these old tracks, bumping them up 10 BPM. Okay, fine, that's cool. But remastering them just to have uh, 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 four on the floor pumping bass. I'm a sucker for that. I'm always a sucker for that. You can get me every time four on the floor. Yeah, d exactly, Han. It's reminiscent that bum bum bum. One two three. 
You've got that Jackson 5 sound. You've also got the... Ah, what is it? There's another... It's, I think it's on Off the Wall. There's a Michael Jackson song that has that same... Ba-dum-dum. Anyway. Very jazzy, very cool. Uh, not Makoto Matsushita. Kingo Hamada. That's what we were listening to. <laughs> Heart Cocktail. <laughs> These guys and their names. Somebody needs to vet this for them. <laughs> All right. Let's see what else. Uh, check in and back in here with our chat, making sure I'm still here. Yoon Jong Sheen. He has some collaborations. Okay, we've looked at him in the past, I think. Yeah, I have no idea how to spell his name. You're asking the wrong dude, man. I can't spell my own name at the time. Uh, yeah, it's a Future Funk song. Nice, still got it. Vaporwave. Yeah, Vaporwave. All right. Somebody else got it. Han got it. Found out about. It because of Vaporwave too. I remember Young Bay, that was the artist that I really really liked who was doing all this uh, back in the day. A game legend. Thank you for joining us. Good to see you, homie. Yeah, Future Funk definitely gave away. Yeah, okay, everybody, everybody's digging on the Future Funk. I love it. I'll tell you one. If we're talking about the Future Funk thing, let me show you my the obsession I had. Obsession is Bay City Rollers. This song. And if I get immediately kicked off here for playing this, it's worth it. So you guys can hear just a little bit of this song. But this is a song by uh, Junko Yagami, I think is her name. So this is the remix. That bass, man. I was like, what is that? So good, dude. And then they do this like cut up of her voice. This <laughs> what is this? Foreign. <laughs> All right, so skipping forward here just to get a little bit of a you can see where everybody goes. love that it's got this like daft punk discovery quality to it but it's so funky and that vocal hook ah so good so good so when i sought out the original i was very surprised to hear it sounded like this just a little bit slower, not much, just a little bit slower, but a complete reorganization of the song. Because in the real version, the chorus is the verse. That's the verse. Very, it's a cool switch, but since I heard it the other way, I kind of prefer it the other way. Although I guess what they're doing really is doing the chorus first, and here's the verse. So I take that back. They're just starting with a chorus, not reversing its roles. Still, interesting choice to start with the chorus. It's fairly unusual. Anyway, but what I thought was cool about what uh, Young Bay did with this song was snipping out the crunchiest parts of the bass, all those pops and the real aggressive slaps, and just, you know, sampling those around to give it a more aggressive bass sound, but still using those original samples. So, very, it's interesting how, uh, how Future Funk came along and people just heard this music and was like, there's a lot of potential here to get down. Because <laughs> this is a cool song. I like Junko Yagami. Uh, but this is just one of many examples of future funk coming along and, and a little bit of that hot sauce that I like so much. 
Now, let's see if I'm still uh, streaming here, because when I first did this song, I this was the first one that gave me real band hammer problems, where it was like, mm, we should strike you for this, but we're not gonna. That was how mad they were. So, I don't know why. She looks good on the albums. Cool song, you know. Everybody should like it. All right, let's see here. Jumping back into the chat here. All right, I'm glad to see some people who agree with me that they like this song. It's a good song. Yeah, the intro to Bay City. It's awesome. It's awesome. Yeah, <laughs> thank you for tolerating me for the remix. I know it's not exactly on topic here, but it's such a great track. Uh, ooh, here we go. Very controversial artists, but that progression on Bay City Roller reminds me of the progression uh, on Ghost Town by Kanye West. <laughs> yeah, man, you know, Kanye West is a sad spot on my soul because... Man, I love me some Kanye West. Early Kanye West, I loved it. Late registration, graduation, college dropout. Those were not in order properly. But then he lost his damn mind. Okay, yep. Okay, so there's my Kanye preface. But yes, uh, let's see here. Ghost Town by Kanye West. Let's hear it. Even though he's lost his mind, he's a good music maker, man. He's a good music maker. Now let's see uh, Kanye West kick me off here. Someday. Someday. Now what, uh, what album is off, this off of? Party Next Door. Wow. This is how far off I am with Kanye, how I've not listened in a long time. I wanna lay down like God did on Sunday. But everything I try. I want to listen to more of this, but again, if I'm listening to Kanye West, that's a guarantee we're getting kicked off this <laughs> live chat. But I will check this out. I'll tell you the thing that if we're taking controversial takes, talking about Kanye, the album that I think that he did, that even though there's a couple tracks that are just like, I, I've never, ever listened to them like, I am a god, it's just, eh. but dude, Yeezus. Some some of those tracks on Yeezus, man, like on site, uh, what is it, Black Skinhead? <sighs> Controversial take. Anyway, that album, man, that it it's such a good noise electronic album. You know, Daft Punk was part of it. It's cool. It's a good album. All right. Oh hell yeah, Prank's gonna hook us up. Thank you, Prank. Yeah, if you get the timestamp for the progression, or just tell them, yeah, hit me up with what that is, and I'll I'll hit you on that. We'll, we'll listen to it real quick. Mm. Yeah, Through the Wire. Dude, Through the Wire is peak, man. Like, All right, name that sample. Do you guys know the Through the Fire is, or Through the Wire? I just ruined it. <laughs> through the fire. I, I remember the first time I found out about this, I was like, 21, 22, and I was thing singing Kanye through the wire, and one of my homies was like, "Dude, I love Shaka Khan." And I'm like, "Dummy, that's this is Kanye," and he's like, "You're the dummy," and I was. Oh, I wonder. Hold on. Let's see what happens if we do this. Oh, but this doesn't pitch shift, does it? So that is exactly what Kanye did. Not that fast, but he did a, like a 1.75, and he didn't. Because YouTube auto pitch adjusts now. He didn't do that, so it got the chipmunk sound. So it's not even that fast. It feels so much slower that way. But history and samples right there. A little through the fire. All right, let's see if we get that timestamp. Boom. Probably at the... Yeah, I got to delete the video now, dude. It's... It, 
I'll, don't worry. If anything ever gets pulled down, I have a process for putting it up on my Patreon for free so that you don't have to pay, but it's hosted somewhere. I've done it on Discord, too. So don't worry. If we get booted off, it will be recorded somewhere. Okay, let's get on the 2.45 to 3-minute mark. The most replayed section. All right, we'll give it a little bit back. Back one. Let's see what we got here. If we got a good sample. Once again, I am a child. I let go, go of everything that mm. I know. Yeah. Yeah. Still the kids we used to be. Yeah. Yeah, you've got that, uh, like that full, uh, what do they call it? It's a, like a deceptive cadence where you're pretending like you're going to go to resolution, but then you do one more suspension chord and then you resolve just building that tension. Uh, you know, very common thing, uh, to use if you're building tension, but. Very, very common in city pop. That is like their bread and butter. I was going to say, what is the... Uh, let me, somebody had defined the chord progression for Japanese pop music. And, yeah, here you go. That's what it is. Six, four, five, one is a good example. Where you usually go one, four, five, one. And so to start on something like that, to start on a six and then go to the under, and then go to the five, and then to the one. Helps build tension, because you're circling that five, which leads us back to one. This all sounds like nonsense to anybody who's never done a theory, and even if you've done theory, it probably still sounds like nonsense. <laughs> but what it has to do with is how we've been trained to hear things. Um, and why I say trained uh, is because it has to do with culture. So things like a major chord make almost, you know, not everybody in the world, not every culture, but most cultures associate consonants, major chords, um, with happy. And minor chords or dissonance with sadness or fear, things like that. Um, same thing with the idea of if something is going really deep and loud, Boom, 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 boom. It's like, that sounds like war drums. It invokes fear, battle, you know. It's these ideas that we associate with the sound. And some of these, a lot of these things are cultural. And one of the most hidden, I feel, underlying ones is how we subconsciously hear music, which is what music theory aims to help explain what you're hearing, which is the function of the chords in relation to our expectations. If we are expecting, if we have a, if a song starts in a major key and we're going along in major, we're expecting it to stay major. You know, that's what we're used to. So then if it goes to minor all of a sudden, you're listening like, oh, well, that's a new chord. And there's all sorts of expectations that we have in our head of how something's going to go. So when something different happens, we go, oh, well, that's very interesting. And for, I would assume, most of us here listening to City Pop, that's one of the things that attracts us to it, is it has a lot of these qualities that are in American, European, North American, European music, but in an unexpected way, with its own personal twist, uh, adding its own flavor. It's very, very cool. So, lecture done. Ted Talk over. All right, jumping back in here, seeing what we got here. I never studied music theory, but I enjoy the nonsense. I love you guys so much. <laughs> you know, what I always tell my students with music theory and all this stuff, because I get asked all the time, you know, how important is music theory? Or I know music theory is the key, and that's just what I need for your Ooh, as I smash my microphone. Sorry, everybody. Uh, but that question comes up a lot. How important is music theory? And the analogy that I always use that I really, really like is, let's imagine you are a race car driver, a Formula One driver. For anybody who doesn't know about Formula One, 
incredibly intense cockpit in that car. Your steering wheel has like a thousand buttons on it. You've got all these gauges. You have a lot of things to control. You need to think on the fly. You're driving the car at its maximum limit. You need to know how to drive it. How important is it for you as the driver to know every single nut and bolt and valve and piece of the engine and all of this? How much of that information do you need to drive? Because if we're talking about, well, how do the brakes work so I can feel the brakes on the car? Well, that sounds pretty important. (laughs) I think I need to know how those engage because that's something that is directly linked to how I drive this vehicle. How much gas is exploding in the engine cylinder and pumping one of my pistons versus the other in the timing and understanding how to adjust the camshaft to get that exactly lined up If that doesn't exist, the car doesn't run. But if you don't totally understand how that works, you can still drive the car. I hope that makes sense. But what I'm basically getting at is understanding music theory, if you're trying to build a car, is super important. So if you're trying to write music... You need to have the ability to understand key signatures, to be able to read music, understand ranges, all these different component tool kind of engine pieces of how to build music. If that's what you're trying to do, write your own music. However, if you're trying to play music or just play something else, you need a little bit to speak the language of what you're doing, but you don't need to know all the super, super nitty gritty to be an excellent top class player, or in this case, formula driver, uh, just because you don't know every little intricacy of the music theory. So this idea that to get to here as a musical player, there's all this groundwork, all of music theory that you need to understand to, and then go from there, no. I think of it very much as that analogy of driving a car. You need to know enough about how your car works to drive it, identify if there's problems with it so you can ask somebody a specific question if something's not working and you can get it fixed, but you don't need to know all where every single screw is, how every single piece interacts, how the electronics work, all those kinds of things if all you're doing is driving the car. So what are those basic driving the car things that you need to know as a musician? Uh, Knowing key major, minor, key signatures and scales, super important. Knowing what the difference is between not only major minor chords, but seventh chords. That's another important one. Um, And just understanding musical language of A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and it repeats, sharps, flats, how that works. Uh, Being able to speak in these chord terms of 1, 4, 5, 1, understanding what that is referring to in the chord groups. Um, But that's really the major stuff, is that right there. And then uh, everything else is kind of an instrument-to-instrument situational thing of, well, what are you trying to do? What's most important? Okay, well, maybe you need to read music. Well, if you're playing by ear and you're listening, okay, well, maybe do a little bit of review on some rhythm things so that you can make sure that you're keeping up on that or get a metronome. Um, but even if you're writing music too, cause I mentioned earlier, well, if you're trying to compose, you need to know more theory. Yes. But even still, you don't need a ton. It, a little bit goes a long way. Um, another analogy, last analogy that I like to use is it's th- think about learning how to read. You have to start, lear- you know, with your alphabet and then you start pairing a couple sounds together and then eventually you understand how to read and phonetically put things together. But we don't teach everybody every word ever. We just get people to a certain level, use context of the language around us, and then it's on you. We learn how to read when we're like, I don't know, kids, eight, nine, I don't know when you learn how to read. You learn how to read before you're double digits. Once you're double digits, you're going off on your own. It's up to you. If you want to read a crazy difficult book and look up every word, well, now you've done that and you've attained that knowledge, but 
all you needed to attain that knowledge was this basic ability to decipher it. And that's what I think basic music theory is, is just having enough to understand what's going on around you. Anything else you do will improve it. But if you go from a point of view of, I have to have this, I have to be an expert in this before I can even allow myself to create or to play or to, you know, do No, <laughs> they're, they're not connected in the way um, that a lot of people think that they are. Man, that was a TED Talk right there. Sorry, everybody. I hope that wasn't uh, super bored. <laughs> super bored. I know Hans being cool. He's like, yeah, that's pretty cool. Being nice. All right. Well, that's 10 o'clock on the dot right there. And that was a very... I like talking about that kind of stuff because I remember when I was first going through and learning music theory and, and all those things. That was how I felt. I felt like I went through <laughs> the stages of this is dumb. Nobody needs it. Jimi Hendrix didn't have music theory. This is dumb. Duh. Oh no, this is super important. Yeah, Jimi Hendrix definitely had music theory. <laughs> I need to learn all of this, otherwise I'll never be a good musician. And then that final stage of realization of oh no, okay, you don't have to have this. It's very helpful, but I need to work on technique in my listening. You know, all those kinds of things. Growing up, evolving, getting better, all those wonderful things. All right. Well, thank you for hanging out with me today and for having the uh, the old theory chat. I always appreciate you guys placating an old man to let, let me have my talks. <laughs> and that, yeah, it was definitely a Yasuel Tomikura episode, and we didn't quite do the seven degrees of separation to Tatsuro, but just to jump back real fast for a second here, we were real close, because this was who we were talking about, Yasuo Tomikura. The next one we were going to do was A Little Crystal City by Junko Yagami, or Junko, not, got Bay City in my head. Junko Ohashi, who is my personal favorite female uh, city pop singer. And that was going to take us directly with our good boy E. Arai, who's on trombone, was going to take us directly to Tatsuro and get us there in seven, seven steps. So it can be done, and we know that Yasuo is a part of that chain of connection. Tatsuro's everywhere. All right, guys, thanks for hanging out. Uh, if you're not already a part of the Discord channel, go join. Totally free, a wonderful place full of super cool people, and we've got really great uh, discussions for all sorts of different things, people writing their own music, talking about music, posting cool stuff, requesting tabs. Uh, we got, I'm, I'm trying to think, who was it? Was it uh, Dapper? Somebody just got a super tasty bass custom-made bass and they posted all the pictures on the discord and it is a sweet instrument and i'm behind on catching up on all this stuff but man that was a tasty buy that's that yellow beast looks good but that's a really cool place uh if you're not a part of go check it out if you got money that you're just tired of having in your pockets and you're like oh my pockets are so full of this money i'm gonna throw it away don't throw it away i'll take five bucks you can go over to Patreon, get access to some extra backing tracks, uh, a couple extra videos, things like that. Just support me. Just be nice. I appreciate it. Only if you got the extra money, though. Only then. Uh, but yes. Otherwise, if you have a request, anything else, feedback like that, hit me up in the comments. Somebody was asking, do you read your comments? I do. I'm slow, but I do read them. Uh, and yeah, hit me up. I'll see what I can do for you. But until next time, I say goodbye to you all. Hope you have a wonderful day. Hope it doesn't get too much rainy or snowier. And I will now battle my streaming software to see which thing I need to click first to get off because I can never, 